Hello and welcome. Today I'm here with Coach Heather. She is a coach uh, here at Dietitian Boss. She supports the Dietitian Boss method and helps our clients. And today she's going to share a little bit about her experience with private practice, what she regrets and what she appreciates about the journey with an emphasis on private practice being a journey. Uh, And we recorded another episode to share a little bit more about Heather and her background. So make sure to check that out so that you can get the full picture of her amazing dynamic background and how she's living her life today uh, with a lot of balance that aligns with the dietitian boss method values. So welcome to today's episode, Heather. Thank you. Oh, so, so happy to have you here and be able to chat. It's, it's very fun. Um, so will you share maybe just like a, a you know, couple sentences of, of background for those that didn't listen to the past episodes together um, about who you are, and then we can dive right into your experience um, with private practice. Absolutely. So uh, thanks for having me here. Thanks for listening to this podcast as well. And I am Dr. Heather Paulson. I am a board certified naturopathic oncologist. I'm currently retired and living in Peru and I'm loving living in South America. The lifestyle here is really beautiful. And I was in private practice for 15 years, supporting people with a cancer diagnosis with naturopathic oncology. I um, did a hospital-based residency, so understand struggles of uh, clinicals and what dietitians go through in that hospital-based environment or clinical-based environment. And um, now I I'm living in Peru, running, I opened a retreat center here to offer another way of seeing life, another lens of living um, compared to the experience I had in private practice, which was a pretty fast paced, uh, high volume, entrepreneurial, uh, crazy existence (laughs) that uh, really led to burnout and Uh, I see so many of my friends and colleagues go through this cycle of, of burnout. Yeah. Can you, can you talk a little bit more about what that burnout? Cause firstly, I think we need to define private practice and then burnout if that's okay. Um, Can you define like what private practice means to you or your experience? And then we can talk about a couple of different definitions as well. Yeah. So my private practice experience, I had a brick and mortar clinic in, uh, in Arizona where I saw patients in person, ran, uh, an IV room, had other providers working for me, including psychotherapy and acupuncture and massage. And, um, so I really was approaching people holistically in that sense. And, uh, private. So that's what private practice looked like for me. It was mostly one-on-one and towards the mm-hmm. end, I started offering um, digital programs and group coaching uh, to support people who didn't have the budget to work with me one-on-one was really why I went in that direction. And um, that, so in private practice also looked like being the digital marketer for my business. It looked like being an author of a book. It looked like uh, writing a ton of blogs. I mean, there was, I was the content creator, the photographer, the, I don't know, the everything. (laughs) Yeah. So that's what I, thank you for sharing that. And I think the traditional uh, private practice means many things, um, but the traditional uh, connotation is, uh, or denotation would be that it's like working in a brick and mortar, which is fine. Um, But there's also other definitions such as digital products and offering courses and uh, speaking and all of that. So I just want to say that private practice, I believe is accessible for everybody. And I think that it's something, even if you don't do full time and you decide you want to have a side business or side consulting as a private practitioner, it is definitely accessible. Um, and I appreciate that you have that background in all types of different areas from book to employing, um, other professionals to work in your private practice to then being location independent. So you've got a really diverse background in private practice to be able to add that experience and share that with our clientele and our business, which we're, we're lucky to have you because that, that helps us diversify our backgrounds, right. And our perspectives, um, on what private practice means and, and how we can be honest to our clients about the journey. Cause it is the journey, right. It's not just yes. a, a quick overnight type of thing. And I, I love that you're talking about wearing a lot of hats too, Uh, So thanks for sharing that. So, okay, we've defined, or we've talked about private practice and how it can mean many different things. Um, The next thing we were going to discuss, I can't remember, I had said two things, but it was, uh, so you were sharing a little bit about your private practice. And then the next thing I I guess I would ask is, what was your, 
what do you look back at and say, or now like, wow, that went really well, or your favorite part or something that was smooth that you're like, really, you know, one of your weak uh, strengths, um, in, in the process. And then what was something that you're like, oops, that didn't go well. Um, and, and I think we all have these experiences, so it's good to reflect for everybody to think about what went well and what didn't went well. Um, I think it'd be really cool if you would share a little bit about that with us. Yeah. Well, one of the things, uh, that I can say in retrospect went well is that I was doing a good job of generating revenue and really having um, what would be defined as a success, successful business. I had multiple streams of revenue. I had multiple providers. I um, had a consistent income that I could hire employees based on that income and not be worried about paying them. Um, so in the moment, I will say I felt very unsuccessful. I felt like I wasn't making enough money. I felt like uh, I wasn't doing enough. I felt like uh, like so such a failure. Um, so it's hard sometimes to see your successes in the moment, but in retrospect, um, especially seeing uh, some of the revenue goals that uh, we have as benchmarks here in Dietitian Boss. I was like, oh, I was like hitting those revenue goals from month one, you know, <laughs> like, and I felt like a total failure. So, um, so I can really resonate with our clients when they're in that, that mindset of like, it's not working. And it's, and as a coach, you're like, this is totally working. <laughs> you are, this is working. Um, so that's one of the successes I, feel um, happened early on and that I'm proud of even now, like, oh, wow, I guess I, because I have to remind myself now that I'm in this new retreat space too, that sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing with business, which is a total false statement that my brain is made up. So I yeah. just have to remind myself <laughs> of that all the time. Like, you know what you're doing. You, uh, I, this business is already um, profitable and it's only been open for a couple of months, which is, uh, which is uncommon in opening a business. Right. Uh, so yeah, I, I can relate if you are listening and you feel like, uh, maybe you're not doing good enough. I can always relate to our clients <laughs> in that. Yeah. And, and when we coach together and when you coach our clients, they feel that, you know, and you understanding being in their shoes and em employing that level of empathy and being able to share your experiences makes the experience more meaningful um, as when you're coaching them. So that's really valued. And I think feeling like a failure at some part of the journey is par for the course, right? I think that that's something that we all experience and working through that is what's more important um, because ooh, those situations of feeling that level of failure are reoccurring in different milestones as we continue to progress in the business, whether we're hiring our first staff member or our 12th, uh, there's always going to be hiccups along the way. Um, and I love that you mentioned you know, being profitable fast, and that's not always expected. And that those are, you know, that's like the kind of nonlinear um, journey where uh, everybody has a different life circumstances and setting and personality and skill sets and pacing. Um, so there's a lot of factors that can impact somebody's journey. Um, so I think it's, it's great hearing you share yours. Um, what would you say? So you, you're saying the good thing you look back and you're like, wow, I was making, like I was hard on myself and I was making money. I, you know, I was making revenue. I hit markers. Like that makes you feel uh, great, which is awesome. Um, because that is important. <laughs> we are in business to make money. Um, so that's good. What would you say you look back on, um, unless if you have more, I'm sure you have a ton of great things, but if you were <laughs> to add to like, if you even had one more thing where you look back and you're, you're really glad or happy with it. Um, if you have anything, can you add that? Or if not, can you share a couple things that you regret? One of the things that I loved about my practice was my team. So, and that's one of the things I love about working on dietitian with dietitian boss too, is that team is so important to me and having that team um, behind the scenes and in front of the scenes was just uh, really fulfilling for me. And they weren't just team members, they were my friends and even um, some of my biggest supporters and cheerleaders and vice versa for, I was for them. Uh, and of course I had successes with my patients and in overcoming cancers that they were told they would never live past six months and we would be working together 
um, for many years and they would have tumor regression. So like those are um, amazing wins. I mean, that's, that's why I kept going, right? Those um, seeing people get better and having, um, having people live a life that they were told they weren't going to be able to live was amazing. That's an amazing incredible. piece of work. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really incredible. So that, that's a purpose-based, fulfilling, mission-based company. And that's exactly what we show our clients how to do here too, which is part of the reason that motivates me is that um, helping dietitians, healthcare practitioners is so rewarding because we're really helping people with their unique health outcomes. And that's a really satisfying thing. So thank you for sharing that. And uh, that must've been really motivating on hard days, right? Even if no matter what happened, you know, cause hiccups happen in business. Um, do you think that that kind of provided you a North star to be inspired to, to support the transformations through a, a seriously challenging emotional time in people's lives? Yes, I definitely had a very strong North star, um, and a, a big why. And I talked about that yeah. a little bit on our last episode. So if you didn't hear it, go back and, and listen to that. But, um, having that strong North star keeps you, keeps me motivated to keep going forward. I mean, there are days that patients aren't doing well in, in advanced cancer and in working in that environment. Um, it's normal to have patients that die. And those yeah. were really hard days because they are family to me. I love them. I love my patients and I got to know them on a really deep level. And, um, so there were hard days, but I, I knew the impact that I was making and why I, I was in that field. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And, um, being able to, again, uh, role model that for our clients. I think that's, that's special. So let's move on or let, let's move to, I don't want to say move on. Um, let's uh, move to a topic about things that you regret or that you look back and you almost like face palm. Um, and not, we all have these, so um, we all have these moments. And if you can't think of any, I would encourage you listening to start thinking because we all have them. Um, so what would be a couple of yours? I have some, I have a lot of big regrets, um, but I, I had to reframe my regrets and failures as learning experiences because that's what they are in business, right? Absolutely. They're, yeah. um, they help us turn towards what we're really meant to do and also uh, give us feedback on what's working and what's not working. But my biggest regret that, and I say this um, with, my full heart is my biggest regrets are solved by the dietitian boss method, which is why I can really get behind the coaching um, here at dietitian boss and, and lead some of this coaching from my heart and really say, no guys, like, listen, <laughs> listen to the advice here. Uh, my biggest regret is that I uh, launched a program. I had done all of this training in digital marketing. I had a coach. Uh, and my coach was coaching me on launching this program and I didn't, uh, I knew my market. I knew my ideal client cause they were in my, my practice all the time, but I missed some pieces of market research where, um, I didn't deliver the program that people wanted. I delivered a program that I thought they needed and what we think people need and what they want often don't align. And they do need what we think we need. they need based on our level of expertise, but they're not going to pay for it unless you give them what they want. So my challenge was that I had um, built out a membership site, uh, like a fresh membership site, not a teachable platform. Like yeah. we had built out a website. Yeah. I had spent Facebook, I had spent uh, 10, like over $5,000 on running Facebook ads plus hiring the people to run the ads, plus the graphic designers, plus this la 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 la. I, so all in all, I spent um, almost $20,000 investing into a program that I launched. And the only people who bought it were six of my current patients. Yeah. And that didn't pay for anything. Sure. <laughs> that didn't pay sure. for anything. I underpriced it. It was a year long program. Who makes a year long program? I don't know. And, um, and so it wasn't sustainable. So I had to refund. I had to either refund the six people that bought it or, uh, 
oh, or I had to roll their, their investment over into my private practice and just use it for one-on-one -on -one consultations and IV therapies. Um, luckily, I knew those six people intimately, and so they were really cool when the program didn't work out. There was no customer service problems there. Um, and in the midst of all of that, I also got banned on Facebook and had to hire a lawyer to reopen my Facebook page um, because of the way that Facebook uh, does, does and does not allow you to talk about cancer. And I thought I hired a company that knew how to work around these rules and they got me banned. So I, I fought Facebook and got my page reopened. Um, and so there was just like so many <laughs> lessons in that process. I lost a lot of money. Uh, I was afraid I was going to have to close my business because this was one of the, um, this was also right when I opened my brick and mortar practice. It was within six months of opening that practice. So the regrets in that was the investment I made up front, I would have totally done a, a beta test. And now I only beta test. I only make thing, products that I'm getting paid to make while, and I'm making them while people are paying me to be in a group or get, you know, to be supported by this new product. Um, so I will never, ever again, build something um, before people show that they're interested. And one of my coaches said, you got to build the plane while you're flying it. Like that's the only way to run a business. Yeah. Um, thanks for sharing that. And that's a lesson really hard for our clients to learn. Um, cause in the dietitian boss training and in the method, uh, we frame out that, uh, you definitely don't want to build a comprehensive program until you've ran through clients as a beta to identify how you can adjust the program to fit their needs, because no matter how much we think we know, we don't until we observe, talk to people and get feedback. And without that data, we're making assumptions. And the more we make assumptions, the less like, likely that our assumptions will be validated. Uh, so this is a really common thing uh, that we see and hear. And uh, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and it's also hard with scaling because you're like, well, I want to create this program that makes sense and it can help people. But then if you're missing one piece right? It, it can cause uh, a lot of friction and that friction is something that's a learning lesson, um, but it's still, uh, it's still frustrating. So I appreciate you sharing that. And um, I can't tell you how many times I hear people coming up with these robust programs that they've ran nobody through. Um, and that's definitely um, doing some research first, I would suggest is a better approach uh, for resource management. So thanks, thanks for sharing that. Um, appreciate it. Appreciate your honesty. Yeah, I just wanted you guys to know that I like it's, I want, one of my things that I wanted to come out of that was that I wanted to prevent this from happening with other business owners in this yeah. wellness and health space yeah. and um, heart-based entrepreneurs, you know, and who really want to make a difference in the world. And so I started teaching some of these hard lessons that I learned to my naturopathic medical students when I was in teaching at the school. And I have them do social media assignments to kind of right. learn the hard lessons that I had to buy lawyers to learn. Um, and I think that that's so important about the dietitian boss method is that, yeah, we test things. We encourage you to test things first that, um, you're getting paid to, to test things and that the social media marketing that's done through dietitian boss is not the kind of marketing that's going to get you banned. And, um, it's really, it's so, it's just so important to me. And I just wanted to save people the $20,000 that I lost. If I can save yeah. it for you, it makes it make sense for me. And I appreciate that. And what I'm hearing is that like working with us helps you align with your values of trying to show uh, practitioners and heart-based practitioners how they can uh, like help people with less headaches, how they can basically become an entrepreneur or achieve entrepreneurship to some level um, in, an, in a more seamless way by seeing testing as part of the process mm -hmm. and really like owning that piece of the puzzle. Like you said, get paid for testing. I think that's a, that's a great way to put it. So um, I, I appreciate that. And I think that's a great way to, to say like, this is how I'm showing and helping people. Like you did it with your medical students that you were teaching and now you're able to, to help us dietitians. And, and we, we appreciate that because it takes <laughs> a team to be able to support um, an entire, like an industry, an industry of dietetics 
Uh, so few of us are in private practice, less than 8% of us own a business, less than 10% of us earn hundred thousand dollars or more a year, despite us wanting to. And so to, to talk about these lessons openly and to have support, um, is, is important. Um, so I appreciate you sharing that. Um, Okay, uh, any other final thoughts or words that we wanna wrap up with today? Um, I, I, we could talk about similar topics for a long time and maybe we'll do some future episodes, but anything on this particular um, episode that would be um, helpful to wrap up with? I think this is a great place to wrap. I just want um, anyone listening to know that despite these regrets, despite these struggles, uh, serving people that is it's in your heart to serve is so fulfilling and I would never be able I don't think I would ever be able to go back to living a life where I was working in a job that didn't fulfill me um, from a soul level from a heart level Uh, so if you are in that space right now where your job is sucking you dry a little bit, just know that uh, there's other ways available and uh, we're here to support you through that and to learn from <laughs> my, you can learn from my life mistakes and yeah. you can follow a method that um, helps you do this in a, in a really low risk way. Cause it feels really risky to put yourself out there. But yeah, this is a very low risk way to explore these options. P- appreciate that. And uh, as a aspiring entrepreneurs, definitely decreasing the risk is good to help us, you know, get our feet wet. So appreciate you sharing that. One of the principles of the dietitian boss method is purpose. So I think this episode did a great job of talking about that and how purpose can guide us as our North star and um, to accepting that sometimes are going to be challenging and how to reframe it and then approach testing as an opportunity to get paid and learn. So those, those were my kind of takeaways from today. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure as always. And I look forward to recording more episodes with you in the future. So thank you.